Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another unofficial Windows version. And this was actually submitted to me by a viewer over on Twitter. You know who you are and I just want to give a huge thank you for actually making me aware of this. Um, and this is actually very similar to that Windows 3.1 floppy diskette that we took a look at in, in a previous uh, video in this series. Uh, and what that basically was, was an entire version of Windows 3.1 that was compressed and was able to be held on a single 1.44 megabyte three and a half inch floppy diskette um, and you guys really seem to like that video and I just really like these like minimalized versions that are able to fit on like one CD or, or one floppy diskette and as you guys can probably tell from the title this is a version of Windows 7 that has been condensed down to a 50 megabyte image file yes you heard me right a 50 megabyte image file um, so this is actually contained and just to show you guys I have the CD um, image put into this Windows XP VM right here and you can see that if we go to properties that this only takes up 50 megabytes of space so on a standard CD which holds about 700 megabytes you could fit 14 of these uh, image files onto that CD um, if you you know basically combined all of those contents of those 14 image files into one image file and burn it to the CD so I think this is just really cool and it's honestly kind of amazing because Windows 7 needs uh, a minimum of 16 gigabytes for the 32-bit release and 20 megabytes for the 64-bit release and this is not even at 100 megabytes this is 50 megabytes and it's able to load a fully functional copy of Windows 7 now as you can imagine this is very condensed and slimmed down so you're not going to be able to use it as like a standard install of Windows 7 you're very limited into what you can actually do and to show you guys uh, what this piece of software or what this unofficial OS is all about. Let's just go ahead and actually boot into it. So this is it starting up right here. You see we actually have the Vista style boot screen and it is a very, very fast um, boot up process. And you see right here we have the um, author's name down there in the bottom left corner. You guys are probably able to see that very, very briefly here. And it just automatically logs in and takes you to the desktop. And you guys can see by all of these icons that we have here on the desktop, this is actually a recovery tool. This would be a tool that you could actually boot into to if you were having problems in your standard install of Windows to actually attempt to fix some of those problems or even um, make a backup of your hard drive. There's actually a decent amount of functionality in here. And in that respect, it is very similar to Hiron's Boot CD in a way because it does contain a lot of useful tools that you can use to, you know, fix your Windows installation. It obviously does not contain as much as Hiron's does, but it does contain a couple of programs over here, which I'm going to briefly go through. And then I'll actually show you guys uh, the operating system itself and kind of show you some of the limitations or actually a lot of the uh, limitations that it has but the few things that it actually allows you to do so we're going to start with the active password changer right here this is a tool as you can probably tell from the title that allows you to reset your windows account uh, password you've got two options here you can search uh, all of your volumes on your hard drive for the uh, microsoft sam database and no this is not Microsoft Sam the narrator that everyone thinks I sound like for some reason. This is the uh, security accounts manager database. Or your second option is to select a volume manually. So we can just search all volumes here and you see it's only going to find our Windows XP volume right here which is you know the C drive. It tells you the file system, what size it is, and the uh, path for Sam which is in C Windows System 32 config Sam. So we're going to hit next here and uh, it will actually say in this case it's actually locked by another application or OS so you can force dismount the lock and then you can get a list of all the user accounts on your system so if you were having problems let's say you forgot your password or for whatever reason you got locked out of your user account you can even modify the administrator account as you can see here and some of these other system accounts like the guest account the uh, help assistant and this uh, support account which as you can see it says this is a vendors account for the help and support service um, so you can even get access to some of these accounts that are hidden to the end user by default um, but we can just go to the VM account here this is the account that I actually log into so let's say I was having trouble logging into this I could load up this tool click next and you could change the name of the account if you wanted to you could add a uh, description of the account and then you can right here choose to clear this user's password so you can't actually like 
reset the password to something else but you can clear the password and then when you log back in you can you know reset it from within windows when you're booting into your account the next piece of software we have is called boot ice and this is actually a uh, tool that you can use to as it says right here manipulate the mbr or pbr of your disk which is the master boot record is what mbr stands for and this is a piece of software you can download from this website this is a free piece of software as far as i know um, and you have a couple of options in here. As it says right here, you can use this to edit the master boot record of your disk. And you can even go as far as to do a sector edit. You can actually edit the individual sectors on your hard disk using a hex editor. You could go over to disk image here. This is where you could actually process a uh, master boot record image. You could select the image file right here and hit process MBR. Um, BCD edit allows you to edit the uh, boot configuration data. You could actually create a new uh, BCD file right here and then you could edit it. Under utilities you could edit uh, grub for dos and you could even wipe your entire disk so this is also a formatting tool if you wanted to completely uh you know, format all of the data on your hard disk. And this tool can also be run from the command line. If you go to this tab right here, it actually gives you a list of commands that you can perform. It also does this cool uh, closing animation, as you can see there, which none of these other programs do. So that is, I, I assume, kind of unique to this program because none of these other programs, like uh, the uh, password changer, just does a, you know, static uh, close effect there. Um, moving on to Ghost32, this is uh, Symantec Ghost. This is a program that um, I have used before. I'm sure that you guys, or at least some of you guys, have probably had some experience with this program. If you're not aware, Norton Ghost is a uh, backup and restore tool that you can use to create a image of your hard disk to save, and then you can restore from that saved image later on. So we can press OK here, and you want to go to the local tab, and then you can choose between either a disk or a partition. If you wanted to make a backup of an individual partition, you could do that as well. So if I wanted to restore this uh, hard drive from an image, I could click on from image, I could select the image, say it was on like a CD or a USB drive, or maybe it was even on a dedicated recovery partition on your computer. Um, you could, you know, select it there and uh, restore your hard disk from that. Or if you wanted to create a uh, backup of your hard disk, you could actually save it to another disk entirely or to an image. So if I wanted to save this drive right here, which as you see is the VMware Virtual IDE hard drive, which contains Windows XP, um, I could select that, press OK, and then it's going to ask me where I want to save the .gho file. So that is Norton Ghost. If you guys didn't really know um, kind of how this program worked, uh, it's definitely very useful. I, I know that I've taken a look at this in some other videos, not in like a dedicated video, but there was one, I believe it was Windows 7 Neon, where I actually had to restore uh, the OS from a ghost image to actually take a look at it because that's the way it was actually submitted to me by the author of it. Um, so I, I have taken a look at this program before, just not in an entire video. Um, but that is Norton Ghost. We can go ahead and actually close out of that. And you guys can probably see when you actually ran it, you can actually run this from the command line. Um, so if you were like booted out of Windows and you kind of had like a, a, a copy stored on like a CD or something, you can actually run it from the command line. It, it is designed to do that, which is also definitely useful. Uh, moving on to the partition wizard right here. This is your basic uh, partition wizard. It's actually created by a company called Minitool. Um, and we, we've taken a look at a couple of different partition uh, wizards on this channel before, but this is just basically designed to edit hard drive partitions. You can rebuild the master boot record from here as well if you didn't want to use boot ice. And you can probably clone this as well. Uh, yeah, if you go to wizard up here, you can go to the copy disk wizard or the copy partition wizard if you want to copy a you know disk or a partition to another location. Uh, this program lets you do that. Um, if I wanted to move or resize this partition with the nice graphical slider, I could do that. Say I wanted to resize this down to a 12.33 gigabyte partition and then create another partition to install like another version of Windows on. Um, I could do that from here. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely a nice addition to have a partition wizard uh, bundled with this uh, suite of software. So there you guys go. That is the mini tool partition wizard. Uh, last but not least, we have the WinNT setup. And this is actually a pretty cool piece of software because it is basically an automated Windows setup tool. Um, so you can actually use this to like if you want to install Vista 7.8 or Server 2008 or Server 2012, 
Um, you could select like if you had a install.wim file, you could select the location of that. You could select the boot drive that you want to use and then the location of the installation drive. And uh, you could basically kind of automate uh, the Windows setup process for you. So if you were, for example, like a system administrator and had to install Windows on like a bunch of different computers, this tool would probably come in handy because you could kind of set up uh, these options and just kind of have it go through the setup automatically. You could even set a unattended uh, file right here by checking this and then browsing for an XML file if you had it. Um, and you know that would definitely help with kind of the automation aspect of the setup process. There's also lots of tweaks as well. If you click on this uh, tweaks uh, button right here, it'll come up with this window and you could, I mean, look at all these options here. You can disable error transparency. You can remove um, the arrow icon from shortcuts. And then you can even modify like the context menu. You can show, um, you know, certain functions on the context menu, like, uh, you know, take ownership or, or show CMD. Uh, there's even some more advanced tools down here, like you could disable system restore if you really wanted to, you could disable hibernation, disable UAC. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, customization tools that you can you know, modify with this uh, program here, definitely very useful. And you even have the option to create a, a VHD file as well. So if you wanted to do that, well, this program allows you to do it. So this version of the program officially supports uh, Windows 2000 all the way up to server 2012, which is based on Windows 8. Um, now, the for, for uh, Windows 2000 XP and Server 2003, there's a little bit of a different uh, setup process. Instead of selecting an, an install.wim file, you have to select the location of the Windows installation files, and you can see that some of these options do change uh, depending on what you know set of versions that, that you choose. Um, you might be able to use this version with Windows 10. I know there is a newer version of this program that does support Windows 10. Um, this version might support it, but you can see Windows 10 was not out at this time, so it does not officially say that it works with Windows 10. But, you know, it could be worth a try. So that is WinNT Setup. This is version 2.3.4. So that is a brief look at these five programs that come bundled with uh, this OS. What I want to do now is actually take you guys through the OS itself and kind of show you guys some of the changes and a lot of the things that are missing. Because again, this is a 50 megabyte install of Windows 7. There are a lot of things that have to be cut uh, to make this actually only take up 50 megabytes on a CD. So you guys can probably see that there is actually a custom icon pack applied, which I think is really cool. It's kind of a you know nice touch. Um, so this is the new Explore icon. You can see that the hard disk icons are changed. The CD icon is changed here. Even things like the folder icons look a little bit more modern. So just kind of a nice touch that the author ha has done here. Obviously, like when this expands um, all of those compressed files that are stored in that 50 megabyte image, it will actually store all of that in RAM. So you can see that we now have this RAM drive, which is actually 125 megabytes. So this is all of the files expanded. And in here, you can see you, you have your basic file structure of a Windows 7 installation. You've got your program files folder, which obviously does not contain a whole lot. You've got program data, users, which is just going to contain the default user account in this case, since it just automatically logs in, and your Windows folder, which contains, you know, all of your uh, files and you know things that the OS actually needs to function properly um, which there is like I said a lot missing but it just has to be that way because this is a very minimalized version of Windows so this is actually based off of Windows 7 service pack 1 and I would show you guys Winver here but uh, Winver is actually one of those things that was removed from the system to save space but we can actually load up the CMD here and type in ver and you can see that it actually identifies itself as Windows version 6.1.7601 which is is the uh, build uh, for Windows 7 Service Pack 1. So obviously CMD, you have a fully functional version of the command prompt in here, so you can do everything that you normally do from the command prompt. In addition to that, you also have obviously Windows Explorer. Uh, and if you go into all programs here, you really only have those same five programs that are on your desktop with the addition of command prompt. And then you have your startup folder, which does not have anything in it. So you really only have literally six programs in this uh, uh, all programs menu right here. You can see that the start menu itself is very minimalized as well. Um, under programs, you only have access to the startup folder. Computer is just, you know, you're going to have access to your C drive. Uh, control panel, I think this is very interesting. The entire control panel 
has been completely removed from the system. If I try to go to run and type in control, which is what you could use to launch the control panel, um, you can see that is actually missing. So all you have uh, for the control panel, it's been completely replaced with just these options right here. So you've got folder options, which will open up and kind of allow you to change your folder view options. Uh, you also have this uh, virtual disk driver, but a lot of these things actually don't work. For example, the phone and modem control panel is here, but you can see it actually doesn't open up when we actually click on it. Same thing for the system um, icon right here, or for the system option. That would normally open up the panel that would kind of show you your system information and who manufactured your computer and all of that good stuff, uh, but it's actually missing from here. Um, taskbar and start menu will open up. You can actually modify the uh, taskbar and start menu, but obviously, you know, all this stuff is going to be reset when you actually log out and log back into this because, you know, it is stored in RAM, so it only temporarily stores all of these files. So you can see I just enabled the larger icon, so if you wanted that, uh, you could do it. Going back to the Windows folder, in addition to everything in the start menu, you do have a couple of additional Windows system tools like RegEdit, so you could launch RegEdit here. We can go to help and about and actually view the about information here, so you can see it's once again 6.17601. Uh, it's actually based off of Windows 7 Ultimate is the specific version that it's identifying itself as here. If we go into the System32 folder, you also have things like Notepad, so Notepad is here but for whatever reason is not in the start menu as a program listed in all programs so you do have notepad uh, i was going to try and like search for all exe files in this folder but the search function is actually missing so you cannot actually search for anything so you can change like your icon view if you wanted to do that um, you can see you actually have the 7-zip file manager as well so that is in here but for whatever reason is not um you know included in the all programs menu um, so that is uh, definitely nice that that is in here. Also, another thing, and this isn't really like a big deal, but there is no recycle bin. So if you want to delete a uh, file, um, it will just say, "Are you? do you want to permanently remove this? If I wanted to go and say, I mean, this was a shortcut, but if I went into the C drive and wanted to delete this log file, uh, it'll just say that, are you sure you want to permanently delete it because there is no recycle bin. Um, there's also no like display options. If I right click on the desktop, there's no option to go to properties to change your screen resolution, um, which obviously you wouldn't really be worried about if you were booted into this trying to kind of, you know, recover data from your hard drive. Um, but you can change your view options for the icons, you can change your sort by options, you can refresh the icons, and you can create a new folder or a new text document. So there is actually a way to get access to Notepad without going into the System32 folder, but you just have to actually create a new text document um, on your desktop. And also another minor thing, you can see the date and time down here in the system tray, but if you right click on it to go to adjust date and time, uh, that is missing, it does not open up, um, obviously, just to save space as well. Uh, but there you have it, guys. That is the amazing minimalized version of Windows 7 that only takes up 50 megabytes on a CD. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And as always, if you guys um, have any comments or questions or even video suggestions for me, be sure to leave those down below as those definitely help. And I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say about these videos. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.